Welcome to Fill in the Gaps. I'm Egg. Um, with me are two tremendous tattoo artists, part-time bakers, part-time trampoline champions. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who told me that, hey? <laughs> wonder. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Mark and Zoe Cummings, thanks for being here, guys. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, no worries at all. How's your day been? Good, good, yeah. Uh, went to the zoo, Red Zoo. Went to the zoo. Yeah, Ranger Reds. Love that. Yeah. How was it? It was a zoo. It was raining. It is raining wet. at the moment. Bird poo. Yeah. <laughs> Kangaroo poo. <laughs> llama poo. I was goat just poo. I was just about to say, aren't, aren't you from England? You're kind of used to the shit weather, but then yeah. you started saying kangaroos well and Well, I've been here so too long. Ah. Uh, yeah. So this is your new home. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't go back to that. Oh, unbelievable. So you heard it here first. He's a true Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> True blue Aussie. Well, I get cold in the winter. I didn't used to. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Haven't grown the thick skin. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he wears an Audi now. <laughs> yeah, he wears an Audi. What colour? My first winter, I, I was still in a t-shirt all winter. Oh, good yeah. stuff. I like that. Yeah. What colour Audi does he wear? It's bright yellow with gorillas and bananas on it. <laughs> oh. Wait, is it yellow because of the bananas or is I it just yellow? So. No, it's just yellow. It's just yellow. Yeah, right. I like that. Might have forget me one. <laughs> I've just got a Barbie one at the moment, so, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> How you been going, Zoe? Good. Worked all day. Busy. Yeah, nice. Life of a tattoo artist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same any, old, same old. any good pieces at the moment or just chipping away with some white girl tattoo? No, I had, I had, um, I mainly do cover-up, so did cover-up today. Yep. What did you cover up? A Celtic cross. Oh. Yeah. Nice. What classic. Is Egyptian stuff, so that was cool. Some Egyptian stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just like the uh, documentaries that you're into, right? Yes. Yes, <laughs> I love that. So I was excited. Yeah, yeah, very good stuff. I love that. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Awesome to have you guys here. Um, we had to reschedule a little bit because of some things. Ended up working really well because I had a very busy day at work yesterday, like I was just explaining to you. Um, very scratchy throat, so I'm sorry if I sound like dog shit. But it is what it is. We make it work. Um, so I know, obviously, like we spoke about, you're not originally from Australia. No. What was the experience like moving to Australia? When did you move here? 2011. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So what was the what was the experience like moving here, and how did you find the changes? I I planned on moving here for years before that, and then one day I was just like started making plans and I was like working for a company who I'd been working for for a while and I was like I'm not just going to leave for free yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll, wait, I'll wait for the payout I'll wait for them to lay me off Yeah, this is 2008 you know the GFC Yeah, but for some reason this company just scraped on through with extra contracts and yeah. kept me on there for years and then once they finally laid me off <whistles> off you gone. went no looking back no looking back yeah that's it it was a bit of a culture shock when I got here, you know. People didn't get my jokes, mainly. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know if they do now. Like. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit different style of, like, sense of humour. I think it's similar, but sometimes not similar enough. Um, but, I mean, we try our best. Try I th our best. It, was, it was mostly people just thinking I was serious yep. when I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still get it. Still get it. I mean, I'm Aussie and I still get it sometimes. <laughs> like, just being a sarca sarcastic dickhead and people are like, you're being serious? I'm like, obviously not, but that's life. <laughs> There's some idiots out there and some of them drive cars, so, you know. It's I remember totally one girl fun. goes to me, she goes, oh, where are you from, Ingra? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, my whole family's from Wales. I went, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> she goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I must admit, you do have a good poker face when you make <laughs> those kind of things because when I met you, I forget exactly what it was, but I said something along the lines of, like, why did you move to Australia? And uh, you, you said something like... I said, have you ever been there? No, you said said something about crime. I said, I, I had to move because of the crime. Oh, yeah, that was it. And I was like, oh, because I, I was in the middle of writing notes, <laughs> so I didn't even see his face. I was well, just that like, was insinuating I was the criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that was it. The rest of you has got here. Yeah. So I don't know if it was a good poker face or if I just wasn't <laughs> watching and paying attention, but, yeah, I was lost. I was like, damn, all right. <laughs> no, he's a good poker face. Yeah. We still have friends that, that ask me if he's 
if he's being serious. Yeah, right. That we've known for like 10 years. <laughs> and they s- Well, sarcasm is not really effective unless you're serious. Exactly. That's that's when it's most effective, yeah. I think, is when yeah. you pretend that you're being dead set and then people either laugh or get very concerned. Yeah. And both are pretty funny, <laughs> I, I must admit. So, yeah, I use sarcasm a lot. But, yeah, anyway, I cut you off. Um, came to Australia because you weren't always a tattoo artist. You were a boiler maker. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That yep. was the job I was getting. Yep. Went nice. for my payout. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I didn't dislike it. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like not being in control when you're – you know, when you're a tattoo artist, you everything is about, you know, every decision you make is about you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry about, you're in charge of where your paycheck comes from, you know. Yeah. You're not relying, you're not working somewhere else, you're not answering to anyone, you're answering to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that was, appe- that was what was appealing about it. Yeah. 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 No, I always said to my mum, uh, she goes, what do you want to do with your life? I, say, I always say that I just want to work for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have that control in your life, I think. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I respect that decision because not everyone makes that decision. It's kind of like, I need a paycheck, so I'm going to stay here. So yeah. the fact that you can make that decision for yourself is pretty good. Yeah, security and comfort, you know. Yep. Yeah, that's it. And then, obviously, he moves over here and you guys meet. How did that go about? I'm just irresistible. I mean, I, I was going to say other... <laughs> like, other where did you meet? Where <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Other than the sarcasm and irresistible looks, how, how did it come about? <laughs> it's actually funny because you worked... When you first came here, like, he worked at a tat shop. Yeah. I got offered a job there. Yeah. But I didn't take that job and I, I worked at T&T where we met. Yeah. So either way, I would have we would have met. Yeah, right. So you met, yeah. through, you met through tattooing. Yeah. There you go. And you just couldn't take your eyes off him. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying I not mean, to be vulgar. <laughs> took a lot of convincing for me to, you know, yeah. go on a date with sure her. Sure it did, mate. <laughs> he didn't make any moves. No, no. Oh, that was not his thing. Made no but moves. I, I think it's pretty no. clear I'm punching here. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't worry. Like, I say the same thing about yeah. me and my fiance. Like, <laughs> this is just all insecurity. <laughs> no. I wouldn't say either of you are punching. You're both gorgeous. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <Thank> you. <laughs> I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, I I know that I'm punching, but it hurts a little when my parents both say that I'm punching as well. Do they? And then her parents say that I'm punching. No. Everyone's like, yeah, you're punching. I'm like, uh, okay, no. okay, I can say it. Just <laughs> like, let's settle down. But, I mean, I am, so it's okay. Uh, no, no, you need to realise it, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fully aware. Don't let this one go. But... The thing is, she normally comes and helps out with the podcast, and she's not even here today. So, <laughs> I, I I take it for today. I take it for today. <laughs> Relationship <laughs> token. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Keeping that one in the back pocket, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, and obviously, you guys are married now. Congratulations. How long have you been married for? Is it seven years now? Two thousand sixteen. I don't. I'm Some quick maths. Good at maths. I'm not yeah. good at maths either. Seven, seven years. Seven <laughs> years. Seven years. I was right. <laughs> yes, and well, I know that the wedding obviously went. All completely as planned, perfect, and we can move on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> no one's wedding all goes to plan. I've yeah, that. especially especially <laughs> your guys' wedding. Uh, it went yeah about what plan? <sighs> about as badly as I've ever heard a wedding go. It wasn't w- that bad. Even even though it no. still went through, it like wasn't that bad for you? You you, you said right. Okay, I'm not dealing with I it. I was like, it's your <laughs> turn now. I, I want to I hear <laughs> your your side of things because when I asked you about it, you were kind of like, eh, it's whatever. It's whatever. Yeah, and when I, I asked you about end. it, you yeah, just like <laughs> knuckled down on it. So I want to hear your side of the story and then you can correct anything <laughs> else after she's explained. <laughs> well, we, we uh, were you want from like when we got there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, got to. To Maui. Yeah. Okay. Yes, <laughs> which is on fire by uh, right now. I know, I it? saw that. <laughs> it's Jeez. it's insane. The whole yes. island's just burning up. Oh my it's god, it's not even recognizable. Yeah. So That's crazy. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to Google that when we leave. Thought, thoughts and prayers out to them. But um, yeah. Wow. So you got to Hawaii. Yeah, and I'd spent I'd spent like the year organizing stuff. We thought we did it the easy way. We bought an online package with I, I can't even remember what the company. I, I just remember the guy's name was Klaus. The guy's name was Klaus. He shout was a German guy. Who shout out to Klaus. He, he no, no shout out. <laughs> no. It was Fuck terrible. you, Klaus. <laughs> it was terrible. We, and like I'd spent all this time organising this, organising my friend's stuff to get there. And then mm. we 
yeah, I think it was like what two days before the wedding, and he called us and he's like, "Have you got a marriage license yet?" And we're like, "Well, that was in the package, so you're supposed to sort that out." And he was like, "No, no, Oops. like I haven't done that." And we were just like, well, "Wait." What? So he ended up booking it last minute. We had two tours booked that day and he booked it in between. We had like an hour to get to this appointment and do it and then get out and go the next tour. Jeez. So it was crazy. And we're obviously somewhere we don't know. Driving on the wrong side of the road, it was hectic. So, but we did it. And then I was like, is there anything else that you haven't sorted? Like, is everything good for tomorrow? Have you got a ukulele player? Have you got this and that? And he's like, oh, no. Just so didn't have it. No. Did it, no, and there was no like, oh, I'll get it sorted or like, here's the number you can call. Nothing, nothing. We we sorted it all through the hotel, didn't we? Well, you did. I say we, but I was at that point, I was like, no, no, I'm done. Say we, say I'm we. Yeah, done. take credit, take credit. <laughs> take credit not, until it's we taken away it from you. We. It was not a we. It was not a No, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm, you sorted out. And thankfully the hotel was great. Like, just we didn't have a permit. That's one no, thing. we didn't. No, we didn't. No, they were supposed to sort a permit to get married on the beach. We don't even know if we got legally married on well, the no, beach. Well, no, we got like, legally we married. We did, but not, I mean, like, legally with a permit. Like, if we had a permit to get married there. Yeah. We don't know. It's Maui backcountry. I don't think anyone really but cares. Unbelievable. Yeah, he was supposed to provide a, what was it? Um, what's it called? A celebrant. As well, I thought you were going to say he was meant to provide a wedding because it sounds like he didn't he do was. that either. Yeah, so. there was all the other things we didn't get. We didn't get it organized, and no one came on the day to organize everyone. The poor photographer was left to do that, so he was like scrambling the whole time because he had to do like three jobs. I hope he that added that to his job. resume: organizer slash photographer. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. So it was. It was. It was so crazy. Sounds like a nightmare. Sounds like a bride's dream. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, on the day and then on the day it rained from like the time we got up. Of course it did. And Mark was like, what are we going to do? We're getting married like outdoors. And I was like, we just get married in the rain. Like yeah. it's it would have cost like two grand to get married on the premises. Yeah. What can you do? No, I was like, we'll, yeah. just, we'll just do it. Everyone's going to get wet. That's mm. fine. But it stopped like I think 10 minutes before the ceremony. Yeah. So we were okay. Uh, all the photos in this uh, wedding package were, was on this black sand beach. Yep. Yeah. And we were like, oh, that's <laughs> so, so dreamy. Oh, my god. We won't get married in any shoes, okay? <laughs> it's a lie. It wasn't sand. It was... Volcanic rock. Volcanic <laughs> rocks. And it was Same the thing. most painful hour of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wore shoes, and I thought that he'd got the memo to wear shoes. Like, wear shoes, it's fine. But because we didn't... No one had coordinating shoes because it was supposed to be barefoot. So... You, you guys just didn't wear... He was like, we're not wearing shoes. We're going with the original plan. Or him and his groomsmen are just like dying inside because volcanic rock. He was like, babe, look, it's, it's, <laughs> I, it's either shoes or the Udi, okay? And I've already got the Udi on, <laughs> so I can't have shoes. It's got to be the shoes. <laughs> it was oh, a it was sacrifice so to prove how serious I was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look at me. like <laughs> Look at my bleeding feet. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. I remember going out on that beach the first day and being like, we're going to scout out where we're going to get married and me and my sister went out and we're like oh my god <laughs> i can't walk on this beach unbelievable <laughs> jeez yeah that doesn't sound like super ideal i uh, mean not no. not how i'm planning planning for my wedding to go um <laughs> no. i will admit um but you know what can you do did she pretty much nail that or did she miss out some information of your <laughs> su no, superhuman accurate. acts of that getting a wedding together yeah we should mention we had a really good celebrant because originally we had this running joke that our friend was gonna perform the ceremony and then he got ordained and then his work wouldn't let him have the time off so he was like right. i can't do it so i think it was six months out and we called and said like look the package included a celebrant can you organize one he was like no what was his name our celebrant yeah yeah we all got we called the hotel and the hotel was like we can get you a celebrant he he lives off grid though so we <laughs> so oh, he okay. doesn't have internet or a phone so we'll get somebody to like contact him for you send him send him a carrier yeah. pigeon or yeah. something <laughs> yeah and he was the best yeah the, wasn't uh, he he was uh, fantastic what's his name cheech father keone <laughs> <laughs> he might as well have been it was that was one half of cheech and Charles. he was pretty chilled yeah, <laughs> yeah he was pretty chilled and like every second whenever he had like a pause he was like all right <laughs> <laughs> it was so all right. good Everyone love loved that. him, and yeah. he had the traditional like the the cone shell that he like blew into and did all the. It was That's so amazing. cool. It was so cool. So it ended up being worth it in the end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any words of advice as a married couple for people who are thinking about getting married? Like, <coughs> <sighs> don't expect it to be any different after you get married. I remember coming back and everyone was like, "Oh, 
you know, what's it like to be married? Like, the ex- I guess there's that expectation that it's going to, it's the same. Like, I feel like a lot of people get married and think that it's going to change your relationship somehow, but it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't mean <laughs> you can do less. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't settle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Haven't got haven't got the dad bod or anything like that or anything. Oh, I, would <laughs> I took that to the extreme, hey? Took it to the extreme. Tell me about that. I liked yeah. your dad bod though. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, but now he's irresistible. So. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. So yeah. Tell, tell me about the dad bod situation. Well, I was I was pretty fat when we met, hey? Yeah. Yeah. No, you. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what I to say. Bi- I was I was bigger when you met me as well. So I was a bit of a chubster, yeah. but then. You know, uh, 10 years of Aussie barbecues and convenient food and sitting on my ass for a job. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty fat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 127 kilos. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And had... <laughs> you know, it's w- that kind of fat that where you have to get, you know, walked off the carnival rides because they don't fit in the seat. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be pretty demoralizing, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Ha- ha- how did you kind of combat that, not just in terms of getting rid of the weight but like mentally as well you, you don't you don't you're still a food addict yeah it's like being an alcoholic except and you have to drink a, a little bit every single day yeah it's pretty tight yeah 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 so it just kind of sticks with you a little bit and never well, you do leaves. you do have to make conscious changes yeah because well obviously like for anyone that doesn't know i had the weight loss surgery yeah Is that like and the gastric yeah, sleeve? yeah yeah, yeah. And um, so, y- you know, they make the, your stomach smaller. You can't eat as much. But there are things that you have to change because you don't get as much nutrients. Yeah. So you have to be more careful about what you eat. You know, you can't just eat the same boring chips and gravy yeah. every day. I mean, you won't, you won't get fat again, it's j- but you won't get any nutrients. Your hair will fall out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> my hair's already fallen out. No, 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 the rest of your hair will yeah. fall out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So um, what kind of changes did you have to make to your diet? Um, Yeah, just make making sure there's all the nutrients in there that you need. And y- you have to take, uh, what are they, multivitamins every single day? Yeah. The rest of your life. Yeah. So you have to drink have to more water. I have to drink twice as much water. Yeah. Because water's, water's a big one, and I've kind of slowed down now that I'm in an office job. Um, I've always been okay being that I go to the gym so much, but I sweat so much so that I have to drink, like, more water than I probably am supposed to. Yeah. But yeah. it is a tough thing, because you do sometimes just forget to drink water, and yeah. Yeah. it's not good. I don't know why. Well, why I'd like I, I, I know immediately when I haven't got enough water, because I'll and start gets getting all sweaty and, and yeah. shaky, yeah. and I'll nearly pass out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, the, gi- the gym was a, was a big deal as well. When I started, because you lose so much muscle during yep. the whole yeah. process, yep. and I had to go to the gym to sort of hang on to that. Yeah, right. A little bit. Yeah. Do you still go to the gym? Nah. When I moved jobs, it, the travel time ate into my gym time, and having young kids just. Yeah, it's one of those things you have to make a priority or yeah. not a priority at all, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now that's fair enough. I think once the s- kids are in school full time, I might go back. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, that's fair enough. So. I know that you guys have foster children. That's correct, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Technically, we technically we only have one now, right? You have yeah. a foster child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Foster child. Um, tell me about that process and how you guys came about that decision to foster. I was forced into it. You cool. were not. On to the next You're subject. Liar. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you you wanted to do it since you can remember, right? It's not something that ever crossed my mind. Yeah. You know, it was kind of just laid at my feet. Yeah. That's just what we chose to do. Yeah. You know, we did we did pursue our own children for a little bit, right? Yeah. But that but didn't work out. Well, we just... That was a real struggle. It was a bit of a struggle. Yeah. But then we just decided not to pursue that anymore and carry on with what we were doing because we had... Was it... Do we, we had a couple of kids at the time? Was it just Levi? Well, we've, we've tried on and off, tried to have our own children like a long time over the whole process of having like foster kids but in the end it was like both those things in different ways are really traumatic and I we had to choose 
one or the other. We can't do both because it's just too hard. Yeah. No, it was when we had the baby. We're oh like yeah, no, that was that was the decider. That that was the decider. <laughs> Tell me about that. No. What, what's what's the baby situation? We well, we've been changing nappies for like the last six years, just yeah, constantly, yeah. and, and the then we were at a stage where we we didn't need to do that anymore. And yeah. then we got a baby for the w- for a couple of weeks, and we were yeah. like, I, I, "I'm good. Let's just tie my tubes." <laughs> well, I ain't getting no surgeries, but we're not. We're we not. Like, yeah. Well, we, we got to agree to flip a coin on that one. Yeah, and yeah. at that yeah. point, it was pretty far. Like we had, we do. You want, can we be like really can open we? about it, or is it like? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no! Don't talk about it. That's it. I don't want to hear it. That's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. We, I guess, I like to talk about it because I know other people have the same struggles, and I, I felt really alone in the beginning. Yeah. Because no one talked about miscarriage, and no one talked about those kind of things. And when it, the first time it happened to me, I felt like I was the only one. And we, we had, we were pregnant after our honeymoon, and we had a miscarriage, and found out at a twelve week scan. And I had my sister and three of my friends were pregnant at the same time. And I just felt like a statistic and I didn't feel like anyone else had the same experience. Um, But we, yeah, I think by the time we had that baby, we'd tried over like years and we'd had five miscarriages and had got referred to fertility treatment. Yeah. And then I was like, so stressed and it was so traumatic the whole thing was really traumatic and i was like i have to choose one or the other i can't keep doing this this is so stressful and then that was kind of the decider really because we did we we were like we we didn't really have to communicate much we just said no we just looked at each other yeah it was two days in and you were like i'm selling all that stuff out of the baby (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh sorry (laughs) it's either me or the baby (laughs) yeah i mean yeah it was it, it was just outlined how tough it was, you know, like once you've got to that point where your child's like out of nappies and is kind of slightly self-sufficient, you don't have to do all that stuff anymore and they're not crying, they're not up all night. It's it's just like it's so hard going back yep. to yeah. that again and starting again, especially with the age gap would be really big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the peak of it, I was changing like, well, we were changing 10 to 30 nappies a day. We had it? three kids in nappies. Because there we had three kids under three at one stage, and we had to we had to buy another bin off the council, didn't we? Because yeah. we did it wouldn't yeah, fill the bi- it filled more than nappy one bin. bin. Yeah, we a whole a whole week of nappies mm-hmm. was one bin at least one bin. Yep, I bet the Garbos loved you guys just a fucking <laughs> bin full of shit. <laughs> well, the council <laughs> like their extra two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't think about like having so having a garden. It. Didn't think about like having a garden or something and using it as like fertilizer or anything. Oh like my that, god, so. I don't even know if that's legal. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine growing your plants in that. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. Grow something disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not fun. But um, I know that you do something pretty interesting, and well, I found it interesting anyway. With um, because you have one foster child at the moment, is that correct? Yeah, and we've got custody of Levi. We we got legal guardianship years ago now congratulations thank you um because you is it write books or storybooks or something like that to kind of teach them about their culture and that kind of thing yeah i I wrote books for our kids about their cultures um but i also that all stemmed from i I started writing storybooks because the department of child protection does storybooks they're called uh they're called are they called words and pictures Something like that. I yeah. think that's what they're called. We had two written for our son, but they were just really cold. Yeah. Um, and they were didn't really have a lot involved. And I was kind of like, they, they weren't coming from a place of creativity. No, yeah. no. But it wasn't just that. They didn't have a lot of photos. They didn't have even of pe- their parents or anything. Like I was like, why don't they have these things that are really important included? And I was like, I don't, I can't read that to my child. Yeah. Because I feel like he's going to have all these unanswered questions, even though he's like four. Leaves a lot to be desired kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then I I wrote my own and I sent that to like my social workers and was like, and he was out of care at that point because I made sure they wrote books for him before he was, before he came out of care. It's really hard to get them though through the department. And then when I started writing them, they were like, Zoe, this is something that people aren't doing and you need to show other people how to do this. Yeah. So that we've started 
facilitating training to show nice. other people how to do it. Yep. And now we've written, I've written two more because I redid Levi's because he's older now. He can understand more. Plus he's asked a lot more questions. So he knows. Yeah. And then we've done, we've done other ones for our other son now as well. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to Levi, by the way. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I hope you guys force him to watch oh this. <laughs> yeah. hey, I don't, he's too young to really understand right now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He's five. Yeah, he won't watch. <laughs> He'll be like, what that man talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know either, Levi. I have no idea. No idea what I'm talking about. So He won't be like that. He'll be like, why you got headphones on? <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair question. <laughs> I wonder the same thing. Um, yeah, no, that's really cool because, I mean, I don't know anyone personally that's kind of gone through the foster system or that kind of thing. So it's pretty interesting that you kind of took that upon yourself Um and yeah, use your creativity and whatnot. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know what you're about to do. What am well, I doing? Well, <laughs> you're about to go, thanks, or or you're doing such a great thing for <laughs> these kids. <laughs> you, no. Yeah, you, know it, you know it. I was never <laughs> going to be doing <laughs> such a great thing for these kids. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always it always feels like really cringy because you you don't when when yeah. when we don't when we did this when we set out on that thing we didn't do it for any kind of virtue. Yeah. No. So when people come along and they give you a big pat on the back, you just feel like really like uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, I understand that. Yeah. Cause I remember when you told me it was less like, thank you for doing that, that for these kids. It was more of like, I've never really thought about fostering in general, but like, even if I ever did, I would never think of doing something like that. It's just, yeah, it's kind of cool that you can use yeah, well that I creativity. Didn't. So yeah. yeah. Cause you do a bit of illustration and stuff as well. Hey, do you use that in the books or? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I do artwork and stuff, but my artwork in the books is pretty, pretty basic at this point. Doing There's cover ups in the books. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just takes it just takes so long to put the books together because I need like a psychologist input. I need yeah, the input right. from the department. I get input from the families if we have contact with families. Cultural um, information. We get yeah cultural information. So it takes me ages to put them together. So when it gets to the pictures, I actually last time for the kids' cultural books, I got them to draw yeah, and right. just paint stuff. And then I cut cut out things to make like water and cut out. So I used their pictures and then just drew my own sort of stick people. Yeah. Because it just, it's, it takes so long. Yeah. It takes so long to put together. Because I was going to say, like when you have to get all that input from all these different people, do you find that kind of restricting in a way or do you find that it helps it a little bit? No, I need it. Yeah. Like, cause I don't, I, I don't know what, um, like biological parents or fa or a family, any families want included in the book. I want a lot of photos for as many as I can get from family. So that's always like, I, I need that. I yeah. need that input and I need it psychologist input because I, I want to know if what I'm saying is the right thing to, to explain to my child and age appropriate. The whole, the whole culture thing's things. a bit of a minefield too. The though, cultural right? stuff was, has been really difficult because we don't get any support. There's so, <laughs> many, there's so many, especially Australia, there's so many different cultural, mm -hmm. spe culturally specific things. Yeah. Yeah. That you don't want to, you know, put the wrong thing in there and yeah. the biological yeah. parents are like, what the hell is this? This is total horse shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Everything I think be right. I think all of that has come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. Like, like even just in terms of just Australian history and that kind of thing. I remember growing up because I mean, I'm just a baby, so I wasn't at school that long ago. Um, but I remember like growing up in primary school and we got taught about like how Australia started, and it was like, yeah, James Cook came here, started was, Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And then as I got older, I was like, that's not what fucking happened at yeah. all. Like, yeah. that, why are we getting taught that? So we've come a long way from that, but there is a long way to go because, yeah, there is so much diversity in terms of culture in Australia now. Mm -hmm. So it is good to have that input from everywhere and get the correct information and spread it the right way. Yeah, yeah. I've really enjoyed learning all that stuff because I, like, I we, we used to travel a lot. I mean, we still try to. It's harder having children, but, like, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. And it's been, it's been really fun trying to find different resources, even though it's been really difficult in some ways because it's specific, like it's very specific. I don't know if everyone, like when, when you look at the uh, map of Australia, but like the Aboriginal map of Australia, yeah, yeah. It, there's so many cultural groups. It's insane. Groups. Hey, it's it, crazy. Yeah. And his uh, son's cultural groups are like, one of the languages is nearly 
that he has is like, is a is there's like twenty people that speak it fluently. Yeah, right. So it's nearly. I think they said it's like nearly an extinct language. Yeah, they've got which is it, they've got apps for it now, which is great. Yeah, that's good. So they've got some really good resources. But it's been yeah, it was more difficult doing um, Levi's ones, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we did a genetic. We did DNA. DNA. To find his out, the department didn't Melanesian. Really care. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's all yeah. we can tell you. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. There you go. But that was cool. Mm. So we get to learn about that. They had. Yeah. I found out they had a Melanesian. Um, they do like a. I think it's Melanesian Cultural and Arts Festival, and they do it. I think, I think it's quarter like every fourth year, and they nominate which island does it. And it was on this July. I think it's only just finishing now, but. It's, it's so cool. I was like, we have to go one year for that. What what actually is or like where is Melanesian? Because I know a bit Melanesian. about geography, but that's really interesting actually. Because you have Micronesia, Melanesia, and Polynesia. and Polynesia. Yeah, right. I used to think they were just the kind of the one and the same thing. You know, no. like they were different sort of blends of people yeah, all right. from the same group. But yeah, they're all three distinct different island groups yeah. island groups yeah, I mean, genetically I, yeah i've never never heard of melanesian i like I, I know a fair bit about geography but yet never never heard of it so that's pretty interesting so yeah that would have been fun to learn about they're the ones that jump do all the bungee jumping and the um and the the beetle nuts and you know the ones curly hair not like one, not Papua New Guinea yeah, Papua um, New Guinea to Fiji, Fiji Vanuatu yeah. Solomon Islands yeah right i think that um Torres Strait is also counted in that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. There you go. The more you know. I'm learning today. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. And then, obviously, outside of tattooing and outside of having um, children and everything, I know that you guys kind of have your own lives, own hobbies, that kind of thing, as much as you can, being tattoo artists, being busy all the time. Um, I know that you play volleyball. Yeah. 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 It's How's fun. That's all it is. Just a bit of fun. Awesome. Cool. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 good because when you when you go to the, the, these volleyball games, you just see a bunch of you know middle aged people like yourself, quite unassuming, and then you play them, and they're all red hot. Like they'll they'll wipe the floor with you. Yeah, we, right. We got the wipe the floor wiped hard with us plenty of times with a group of old geriatrics. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. How did you get into volleyball? Did someone kind of introduce it to you? Yeah, someone or? was just like, oh, you fancy, you fancy filling in after work? Yeah. Did you ever play it back home or anything? Not beach volleyball. Mm. But, you know, yeah, we had a clothesline in the backyard. <laughs> that works. Give that a go sometimes. That works, yeah. Yeah, with a little like, soccer ball. I feel like that's the equivalent <laughs> in, like, Australia. Of Played a little bit in school. But having yeah. a backyard and having, like, a bin or something and playing a bit of cricket. That's yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Probably the yeah. same thing, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Did you play any other sports growing up or anything other than trampoline king? I was quite the runner. I was a rugby player. Played a bit of basketball. Nice. Yeah. Rugby league or rugby union? Uh, the the, uh, the man version, the rugby union. The, the the bitch version? No, the, <laughs> the, the version that men play. <laughs> I think, I think there's a little bit of thing in the mic here. So, so you said the men version rugby rugby league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the one where you don't collapse on the floor and have a li- little panic attack. Oh, so <laughs> the one the one where you where you oh got to get gosh. right up into each other's booty holes That's and it. grab yeah, the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> how long? The, how the, the prison kind of homoerotic game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, and I got I have to get the trampoline information out of him. Tell I me. I don't about know what she's talking about. What are you talking about? So you Zoe, tell me about the trampoline situation. You told me and Phil that you years ago that you were trampoline champion at your school, and no. you told us this is your words. You told us that you could jump from the floor onto the top of a solo bin, uh, and we were okay. like, no, <laughs> this is all true. You can't do that. <laughs> no one can do that. No, this, this man clearly can. <laughs> he likes getting up close and personal with other men on the rugby field. Okay, he can do anything he sets his mind to, including whatever the trampoline stuff was. <laughs> okay. And jumping on a slope. First thing. Bin. Clear the air. Let's go. I sc- all I said is I top- scored top marks in trampoline in high school. That is not what you said. <laughs> there was no championship of trampoline <laughs> that I entered. All I said was I got top marks. And number two... I ran high jump and long jump. 
across the country. I could I could jump. Ooh. I could jump. What did you have any like records or like PBs that you can kind of flex or anything? <sighs> Let me remember. Long jump was just short of six meters for a 15, 16 year old. Good effort. Pretty good. Not bad. I'm not gonna blow my own horn, but I'm gonna blow, blow my own horn. I'll blow it for you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the high jump was meter ninety. Something like that. Pretty good effort. Yeah. 14, 15 year old. Yeah. Because yeah, the trampoline thing, but then also when I met you, you did say I was gonna go to the Olympics, but then I blew my <laughs> knee up. That was yeah, your words, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so weird because you don't have any issues with your knee. You have issues with like that was your wrist and your neck and everything else. <laughs> oh, okay. See, <laughs> <I was> like <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I still can't tell when you're joking and when you're was not. Wasn't me who was I joking. I still don't know. <laughs> We've done well there. We've done yeah. very well. Um, Team sarcasm. <laughs> absolutely. That's us. Blowing each other's horns and team sarcasm. Um, <laughs> and then I know that you like to do a bit of cooking and baking and that kind of thing. What's yeah. your What's your specialty? I like Christmas sweets. That's my specialty. I think you're sick Christmas of them. Sweets. Mark gets them every year. Mm. So he's, yeah. He's hey. quite the master baker. I'm master baker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's into mas- masturbation. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I walk in all the time. She's, she's no, masturbating. I'm, 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 not a, I'm not agreeing to any of these. <laughs> she got that one. She caught on to that one. That's all right. That's all right. But yeah, Christmas Christmas treats. Um, you reckon he's sick of them? I'm not sick of them. So what, is there not? Didn't, didn't bring any? <laughs> it's, oh. not, it's not December yet. So okay. Okay. She made muffins wait. yesterday. Actually, yeah, yeah, but everyone ate them. There's none left. Levi, come on. Yeah, there's none there. He went for breakfast, didn't he? Yeah, oh, and you nearly ate his. Because there was two left with icing on them last night. And I was like, I'm going to put them in the kids' lunch boxes. And he's there like, I'm like no, no, no. <laughs> Can't say I'd be any better, to be honest. So, what, <laughs> like, what, no, no, no. no. What, won't be fair. <laughs> what type were they? Um, chocolate and Snoop Dogg. Wanted. Yeah, there the were Snoop Dogg ones. Mark Snoop bought me, Dogg ones? Mark bought me a Snoop Dogg cookbook that I asked oh, for for my nice. birthday one year. That crook from Crook to Cook. Yeah. It is the best cookbook. It's Martha we, Stewart, really. It, yeah, it's him and Martha Stewart, but that's right. It's, yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. We use it for everything, don't we? Yeah. We make and we have like I staples one, that I we make in there all the time. Here, actually, oh, did you? Yeah, it was. yeah, we make cornbread. We make cornbread. We like to have um, in the summer. We have Mark loves smoking meat, so we you've got it's like a niche now. You've got it to like perfection, I think, at this point. And then I, I make don't all do the anything sides. fancy. I just no, cook but wings, you, ribs. Yeah. If it ain't steaks. broke. If it ain't broke. I'm not one of those. You've tried I'm not, everything. I'm not though. one of those guys that spend all day cooking up a brisket. Oh, or, you have or, done or, that. I have, but. <laughs> See, I'm somewhere in between the two of these because I enjoy baking, but I just do it the simple way. I look at the recipe, yeah. find out how much flour I need in something, and then just kind of go off. Wing it. Go off there for the rest of it, and it ends up tasting like dog shit, and I'm like, that's <laughs> all right. I'll eat them. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm somewhere, somewhere between. But um, yeah, so Christmas treats. That's yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of my niche. But yeah, when we do when we do the cookout, you we have a thing where he does the meat and then I do the sides. You and do, we the do the all American like style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Yeah, nice. Is there anything else that you kind of specialize in? Like if you if you had to go on like Master Chef or something, and they said like make this and make it perfectly, what would you want it to be? On the spot. I don't know. What do I what do I cook that's like What's what's your favorite thing that she makes? I make a lot of curries. You like Ooh, curries. Nice. But the kids won't eat them, so we have to they have like after bedtime dinner. <laughs> the taste the, like the taste or the spice? What's the, what's the rice that you cook? So, what rice? What biryani? Yeah. You like biryani? I like biryani. biryani. Yeah. Nice. But you gotta go to the Indian grocer. You can't get curry paste and stuff from from the woolies. Mm mm. <laughs> you could go to the proper shops. How how are you with spice? Are you? I I I love spicy food. Yep. Yeah. My How's husband? your tolerance to no, it though? He doesn't. No. Have <laughs> I don't have tolerance. For I'm it, no. I'm exactly the same. I will eat anything, like literally anything. But that's him. The yeah. littlest bit of spice, and I am just gone. Like yeah. <sighs> this is hard to admit, but like. <laughs> Especially my partner is South African and being in a South African household, yeah. there's a lot of spicy foods and whatnot. Your braai. Yeah, the braai. Yeah. 
sweet and sour sauce. I eat that and all of a sudden my mouth's like, oh, what's no, going on? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Uh, not sweet and sour, sorry, sweet chili, sweet chili. which That's is so mild. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'll still eat it. Like I'll eat really spicy stuff, but just my mouth is on fire and I got to have a cup of milk there with me because I just, yeah, I'll still eat it because I eat anything. But My, my, my problem's more the other end. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he can't. Yeah. yeah. Nando's, we used to have this joke that Nando's is his kryptonite. It used to be stairs as well. Remember, it was stairs and Nando's. <laughs> stairs and, and Nando's. You, <laughs> at the same like, time. <laughs> Somewhere had lots of stairs. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. If I have spicy food and I have work the next day, it's a 45-minute drive. It's always a bit of a, you know, a touch bit of a dicey. Yeah, touch you know, and go. A dicey drive. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can imagine. Running yeah. the gauntlet a little bit. It's weird because spicy food actually doesn't do that to me, but I'm lactose intolerant, gluten intolerant, <laughs> okay. fructose intolerant, can't eat fruit. Like everything Why? just goes straight through me. But spicy food kills my mouth, not so much the other end. That's so, so weird. It's very odd. But strawberry milk and strawberry ice cream are the two things I'm like, oh, and mangoes, I'll, I'll put up with it. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's worth yeah. it. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes my fiance has to put up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Clear the room out a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> Gets like that with um, beef jerky, hey? Oh my god! Don't even start, start with that. Please she, start. She loves beef jerky, and no, whenever me, she eats beef jerky, me. she has farts like a dead body. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> you bought. A- Sorry to bring it up, babe. I know it's embarrassing. She she brought up the trampoline stuff. You can yeah. bring up the beef jerky. <laughs> I can't believe you're buying this. <laughs> This is definitely not a story about me. <laughs> and that's all sure we have that? time for. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So I'll let you guys go very shortly because you've got a child to get back to. I've got two, yeah. You've got children to get back to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll end off with some not so rapid, rapid fire questions. So we'll start with you, Zoe. But you guys can both answer. Um, if you weren't a tattoo artist, what would you want to be? Not like what. What do you think you like could be, but what mm. would you want to be? I I would want to be an archaeologist. An archaeologist? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to like I after I did my apprenticeship, I was like, actually, this is I really would like to do archaeology and I'd really Because you're into like, like a lot of history stuff, hey. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, that is totally my avenue. I should have done that. Yeah. But and I looked into studying and I could have studied part time and worked tattooing, but then at the end of the day I was like I really want to be working on digs and stuff and I can't do that if I have a family. Yep. I wanted a family, so I just weighed up my options and, like, yeah, tattooing's yeah. flexible. It's good money and, like, I really like working with people So and, like, meeting new people. So that was – it's – it went quite well. Yeah. Really. There you go. Yourself, other than being trampoline champion, what would you want to <laughs> be if you weren't a tattoo artist? I don't even know. That. And if you say boiler maker. I he won't say that. I will jump across this table. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would definitely want to be some kind of craftsman. Maybe just whittle things out of wood in a cabin on a desert island somewhere. <laughs> in Hawaii after a wedding. <laughs> well, not a desert island, a <laughs> tropical island. That'd yeah, be yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 So something hands on. Yeah. Rugby yeah. union. <laughs> <laughs> very handsy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, very handsy, very handsy. Um, next one. If you could spend the day with anyone in the world, dead or alive, not including family or friends, I know that they'd be the first people you'd choose, but who would you want to spend the day with? You can you can start this one. 90s, Jim Carrey. That's a good answer. Yeah. That's a good answer. I'd like to, ta- I'd like to take answer. him out for the day. Activities. What, what what would you get up to? You get to plan the whole day, and he'll just go along with it, and he'll pay for it. So it's it's really important that this is nineties Jim Carrey. Okay, because today's Jim Carrey is a little bit kooky. Yeah, who he, isn't? Nineties. He's what? He wasn't kooky then. Like, come on, <laughs> no. it's Jim Carrey. That's the whole point. Nineties Jim Carrey <laughs> was fun. <laughs> now he's like your uncle, your crazy uncle. Well, anyway, white water white water rafting. That would be fun with Jim Carrey. There you go. Yeah. Start off the day with some white water rafting, some lunch, hot wings. Yeah, that'd be fun watching him eat hot wings. Hot wings, and then he has to follow you to the toilet <laughs> and help you clean up afterwards. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> and then we'll go uh, 
I don't know. What can you do on a night with Jim Carrey? You tell me, mate. It's, it's your, your yeah. It's your, your day. Your your day. Yeah. He's paying as well. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd have him give me a massage <laughs> to make it real uncomfortable. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so weird. <laughs> I feel like he wouldn't get uncomfortable, though. Yeah. But, I mean, imagine telling that to your kids. Jim Carrey, give me a massage. It's so funny that that's your answer because I always describe a Levi as Jim Carrey. That's, mm-hmm. like, the best way that I can describe our son. Your child is Jim Carrey. He is Jim Carrey. Like, it's like trying to raise Jim Carrey. He is, like, it's just all physical comedy all the time, isn't it? Yeah, he's just like that's he'll do anything to make anyone laugh. He is a handful. Gets all his energy. Oh, from yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Extrovert. He's yeah. So it's so weird that that was your answer. Mm. And you said he's how old? He's five. Okay, so yeah. about thirteen years, and I'm going to get him on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he will be very entertaining. He's way more entertaining than any of us, isn't he? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to that's keep right. up with. What would your who would your person be? Oh, I feel like you gave a really good answer, and mine's kind of compared to yours okay i i would Go. i would want like some kind of tour in egypt with zahi hawas who's like a egyptologist over there that's cool yeah i'd want to like go to the pyramids and is that the guy the with day. the hair no no what that's that's the crazy that's the crazy scientist guy on ancient aliens <laughs> <laughs> would that not <laughs> be a better day no <laughs> oh no i don't think he no no I think it would. Would you ideally want that to be in the current day or like centuries ago or if you could pick? No, probably like current day. I yeah. mean, because he's still, he's still going and they're still on digs and stuff and yeah. they're still finding things. So yeah, right. I'd want to go over there and know as much as I could in a day, find out. That's yeah. fair enough. What would happen if you went there and you found out nothing? I would be pretty devoted. That's mostly what happens on these digs, isn't it? No, it's not. It's can't no, imagine it's that not. you can't imagine you'd strike gold like every time you go out, like when no, you're you not wouldn't. No, you definitely gold, not. But yeah, yeah. No, you see, but you I want to go shows. see pyramids and stuff that's already there. You no, only go to the museum yeah, cool. and you watch these shows and they're all excited about this new dig and they're like, oh, we're gonna find Nefertiti's tomb or whatever, and they find this tomb and they're just like, oh, nothing. You know, yeah. That's not a, how it goes. He was a decent priest. <laughs> They find things, and then that leads to other things, and it's like, yeah. Never seen it. I've watched all the shows you put on when we're going to sleep at night. Never seen anyone find you, any anything interesting. I think you just get sick of it because I end up narrating all the shows for you. <laughs> and because, like, he'll put on a show. He, he has no chance at putting on any documentaries to do with that stuff now because but you put one on Tutankhamun, and then he's watching it, and they were like, oh, we couldn't work out who his father was. And I'm like, his father's this person, and this is like... <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeah, she did. Okay. She she's a pretty good bank of knowledge. To be fair, <laughs> I was like, you don't even need to watch this. You just try to listen to me, mate. <laughs> just ask me the question. She's not wrong. <laughs> Spoiler alert! But she hasn't even seen it before. <laughs> 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 Love that. Um, last rapid fire question. Then we'll get to the good old would you rather. What is your hidden talent other than trampoline stuff? What's your hidden talent? Or you can go first. I don't have... Or I party trick. I have one. Party trick or hidden talent. Do you uh, have one? I don't know. Or, uh, I guess my hidden talent is I can just fix anything. That is true. I just yeah. fix stuff. Although it's not really <laughs> an exciting talent. <laughs> one of my friends was commenting on that the other day. She's like, every time... I just... Every time it just makes me think of the... Um, the when you were trying to solve the problem of our fat cat eating our skinny cat's food and you made the the thing. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was set to their weight. <laughs> yeah. It was like a like thing they had to jump on to get their food and if it was too fat, it would go like <laughs> this. <laughs> and it just it was like a prototype and it didn't work, but it was like they were too scared no, it, to go on it. The only reason it didn't work is because she was too she frightened to She was too scared to, to go on it, it yeah. yeah. Oh, so It was funny. set to her weight, so it was like a trap door. <laughs> So if the the fat cat got on it, it would just flop down and he wouldn't be able to eat her food anymore. I love that. But she's like, Mark's always trying to fix something and like make some, you know, make up some new invention. And that was some that. Some contraption. Yeah, some yeah. contraption. That was the first one. Yeah. So you can fix or make anything. I, I like you to can, think yeah. so, yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. I make, I make a little bit of my tarugia. 
all yeah, the time. Yeah, you did tell me about that yeah. and make your equipment and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Why, why, why spend forty dollars on a bit of wire from a supply company when I can spend forty dollars and make five of them? And Can't argue with that. Wi- which takes you about ten hours Wrong. in the shed. No. Takes him nine and a half, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you could have just spent forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a little bit of a point. What's your hidden talent? You've got one. Come on. I don't have one. Yes, like you I do. Do I have a hidden talent? I don't feel like I have one. I don't know anything safe for the podcast. I don't have anything that's <laughs> not safe. What are you talking about? I honestly don't know. I'm a pro at getting car seats in the car. Yeah. Getting car seats in the car. Yeah. That is a talent because yeah, I've can't. tried to do that. I don't have a kid, but I've tried to do it and it's not easy. I've done so many times that I'm so over it. And it, when I see people doing it, I'm just like, oh, just get out of the way. They should, they should turn that into <laughs> a TV it. show. First time car seat installers. Yeah. And just <laughs> like, and ju- yeah, no. it'd just be like full 10 second clips of, clips of dads just raging out. It's like it's like the baking shows where they get people to like make cakes and stuff, but <laughs> they, they're not good at baking. Oh, just nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's fun. Yeah. That, well, I mean, car not, seats are just raging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Car seats what and then <laughs> straight from car seats into nappies. <laughs> oh, I w- yeah. I would pay to see that. <laughs> no, we've had our fair share of nappies and explosions. See, and that's that's another one. That's right. another hidden talent. You can nappy anything. Na- no, I haven't tried nappying the cat. No, I'm sure you could. do that. <laughs> what's your what's your cat like? Boo, she's a, she's scared of most things. <laughs> yeah, she's a t- she's a timid. We yeah, we had a, we had Fado for a really long time. And Fado he died last year. Yeah, rest in peace, Fado. Yeah, he was the best. He was kind of like I got him when we just after we met, and when we, like, he kind of forced me to move out because I had a cat. All of a sudden, he was like a stray, and then we ended up. I ended up taking him in and then he grew with us. He was with us before we had kids and then we had kids and he was great with the kids. And Yeah, it took you ages to get over that cat. I'm, though, I'm hey? still not over it. I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. You, you, she, she thinks I'm a sociopath because I wasn't, you know, like no, that upset when he died, but no. he, he was, was dying for the old. last three yeah. years of his life. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I was just glad it was yeah. over for him. Yeah, he was, and he had like so many kids. It was just horrific. Fair enough. That's yeah. like I, I live in a share house at the moment. They've got a cat. Sorry if my housemates are listening to this or anything, but they've got a cat, and I just want like I would never harm an animal, but sometimes I just want to run out there at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and it's screaming at my door, <laughs> and I just want to throw it out the window. I'm like, why are you yelling? There's nothing to yell about. It just screams, and I'm like, come on, bro. Like, oh yeah, two, used to do that. Two yeah, o'clock persist- in the morning, persistently annoying oh, when yeah. they want something. So and anno- like, uh, I would never lay a finger on the little thing, but. Yeah. Fuck yeah. me, they just they push your buttons. They push your buttons. Whereas oh the dogs, yeah. they just they just sleep. We had a similar problem with a rat in the roof recently. Yeah, and it was that what? damn rat. Jeez. It was playing games with me. It wasn't. It's a rat. It was cold and rainy and the rat wanted somewhere to like live that was dry. Are you feeling sorry for the rat? No, but you were going crazy over this rat in the room. It, it would scratch above our heads in the bedroom at two, three o'clock in the morning. I was morning. asleep. I didn't hear it. Well, sounds, I did. That sounds a lot like me. Once I'm asleep, <laughs> yeah, I'm asleep. I, I don't like, hear no, anything. But I, I tried, trying to I tried to <laughs> every single rat trap at Bunnings and it wasn't having any of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were sat there like, and then I think you, he goes and checks. So he gets in, he gets home from work, goes, climbs into the roof. The kids are like all way in. And then we... We like sit down and have dinner when he comes back in, and then it's right in the vent, like right next to the table. And you could yeah. hear it scratching, and like, <laughs> and then everyone I'm like, shh. And <laughs> I banged the wall. Yeah, like, and it was like, mm, and it went. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear it behind the wall going. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, you went to, so we sat down before we went. To I think the it bed. was laughing at me. It yeah. Going, <laughs> yeah, you were, just ter- you was, it was next level. That day, that day he was like sat on the, he's like, War was on. I know I sound like a crazy person, but this rat is playing games with me. I was like, it's a rat. It's haunting me. <laughs> it's not. No, I think they do. Hey, because I had, I had a problem with mice recently because I'm up in the hills and they just want to come inside to get warm. And yeah. one came under my door and it was like crawling between like um, all my drawers and stuff where all my clothes were. Because yeah. like one of the ones from Kmart was like crawling on top of my shirts and stuff and just going on top. And just like hopping over the mouse traps and stuff, I'm like, you little oh bitch. No. <laughs> and then I woke up in the morning and 
yeah, he didn't jump over one of them. Oh, yeah. gross. I do have another gross story about animals dying in my house. Not not pets, but I'll tell you. A I'll teaser. Go for it. I'll it wasn't a big one. I'll tell you off the podcast because oh some no. people might not, <laughs> might not love to hear it, but um, we'll go with. I'm excited. A ro- <laughs> I'm excited. A rodent had its head chewed off by a dog. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we used to have a cat named Killer, and we used to that would just kill everything. You had a cat named Killer and a cat named Fado. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you pulling these names from? What's what's I going on? I didn't name Killer. Fado we named because uh-huh. he was really fat, and he got fed by everyone in the neighborhood. So is that why he was fat or he's fat and then he That's why got he was fat. Okay, yeah. okay. And, yeah. and Killer was just... Killer just killed everything. He had a three bells on his collar and a cone on his head. Is that what he happened to Fado? Came home with a bird. Killer Killer was around or... No, definitely oh. not. Oh. Fado was weird as well. Aren't <laughs> cat's names supposed to be like the opposite of what they are? I don't know. Or pet well, Fado was pretty skinny in the end, so maybe. Yeah. Okay. A cat named Killer, you would think it's going to be how cute would it? yeah, yeah maybe. So. but the cats yeah. used to bring like live birds in and they'd put them under my dad's bed and stuff it's like like gang members and stuff like that if you heard like a gang ne- gang member named like buttercup or something you'd be like shit <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> or cellmate <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly you'd be like shit they've done some fucked up stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's right okay um before we go end off with Good old would you rather. I know you were Googling before and you reckon you had number 13 that was going to stop me. <laughs> yeah, what I was number we, 13? I think we changed because we have kids that are like obsessed with gross stuff. Go so ahead. I Make think it that as gross was as the you want. I don't remember what it was. It was would you rather brush your teeth with someone else's toothbrush or wear someone else's dirty underwear? Okay. Whose toothbrush and whose underwear? Well, that's what he said. He was that's, like, it that's important. whose it was. That's very important. I think the key to this one is you don't get to find out. Yeah, you don't get to know. So you to have know. to do it and then you find out. Yeah. No, so you just don't get to find you out. You don't find You're out. Left forever, what? forever no. questioning. How, how long am I wearing the underwear for? All day. Well, that's just day. one day? That's your yeah, underwear now. No, it has to be one day because the toothbrush you never allowed you to wash do it, it more than one day. <laughs> we toothbrush, do I have to do it morning and night? Yeah. Mm. And, and the underwear is all day. Okay. Um, I think I'm going underwear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd have I'd have to have a look at the underwear. Obviously, if they're like soiled, would you smell it? Yeah. Would you like smell it before you put them on? No. Oh, that no, that would make it worse. I think <laughs> make it worse. Imagine you chose the underwear and then you did smell it. And it was terrible, and you still had to wear the underwear. Okay, so I'll I'll go with underwear if it's just like a not great toothbrush versus not great great underwear. I'm going with underwear. <laughs> but if it's like soiled underwear versus like a clean looking toothbrush, then I'll obviously go with the toothbrush. But if it's just like equal, you don't get to see it. No one's showing you the underwear or the toothbrush yeah. before. So you just got to pick behind a closed you door. Just got, someone yeah. says, this, "Do you want yeah. this or this?" We're not telling you who th- who <laughs> the underwear oh. belongs to or the toothbrush. Oh, oh. And you don't get th- you don't get a quick sniff or a scratch beforehand. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um, I'll go underwear still because I feel like underwear is more gross and will lead to ideally lead to less after problems. Whereas a toothbrush, I feel like, can cause all kinds of stuff because it's going in your mouth. Can you catch her? I don't know. I feel like from some like no, you crabs could, or something. You could like definitely you catch, catch something. something, but I feel like there's less chance from underwear than there is from a toothbrush. A toothbrush is going straight in your mouth, like yeah. You, know. you, could, you could catch herpes in either, I guess. Yeah, you could. You could. Yeah. yeah. I'm going with underwear. What are you going with? Um, I already have Both. herpes of the face, so Both. maybe the toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to double up on the herpes. <laughs> <laughs> clean, clean yourself with the with the toothbrush, and then, <laughs> and, then yeah. and then clean your teeth with the underwear. Yeah. What would you go with? I don't know. No, nah, you're not allowed to say. I know. I'm you just, can't I say. You can't say neither because that means both. Okay. I don't know. I think I'm going to say underwear. Yeah. Because the toothbrush thing grosses me out. Fair enough. I feel like, though... Good with the underwear, though. The question I would have chosen... Di- if you had children, I would have given you a different... Would you Go ahead. Know? I'll pretend that I have children. That's fine. Go ahead. Would But, like, have you ever seen kids drink bottles? Oh. After I, they drink out of them? I do I do the best impression, impersonation of kids, like, drinking and stuff because I've seen, I've seen it a few times, so... With all the floaters? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's like, would you rather drink all day out of your kid's drink bottle mm-hmm. that has been used mm-hmm. or would you brush your teeth with their toothbrush? Because kids are gross. Like, <laughs> I would not want to do either of those things. That one's a lot easier to answer. Toothbrush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, yeah. I mean, I would. Yeah, I mean, it. but I wouldn't want to do Kids' teeth are usually in pretty con- good condition. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. And you can somewhat control what's going into your kid's mouth somewhat. Mm. I've seen my kids scrub the drain with their toothbrush. Yeah. I'm not saying it I would don't be trust good. Them. <laughs> I'm not saying it would be good. I'm I'm just that. saying that like the bottle, you know that it's going to be bad. The toothbrush, it might not be that bad. Yeah, and at least you know your kids don't have like mouth diseases or anything. It's true. <laughs> like some random. Very true. <laughs> Good boy, Levi. They might have mouth diseases after you've used their teeth. <laughs> yeah, gross. After no, you, you, you uh, and your oral after, you, after you've scrubbed your teeth with the dirty <laughs> underwear, then you start using your kid's toothbrush yeah. and, yeah, pass it on to them. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Maya, would you rather? It's a little bit little bit um, inappropriate, but that's okay. I'll Not try, PG I'll, rated. I'll try, I'll try bleep myself best I can. Um. It's not really would you rather, it's would you take it? Would you take the offer? Would you rather have... I'm glad you said offer. Would you rather have a million dollars up front or for the rest of your life you get $100 for every three seconds you have a finger up your... A million dollars. What was was the price on the other one? 100 bucks for every three seconds. So you could fall asleep with it up there and then you accrue a certain amount. I'd take, I'd take that one. Same. <laughs> and the thing is, one, no one of one of my biggest fears is anything going near my uh-huh. <laughs> and, like, I hate, like, it's the reason I can't I can't sleep yeah. naked or anything because <laughs> this, sound, fear of it. this <laughs> sounds so stupid, but this is the way I explain it. I am terrified of a robber breaking in, coming into my room, not stealing anything, just lifting the sheets and just going, bang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible. Like, yeah, I hate it. I so you've never give it. yourself an ac- no. accidental proctal no. exam? No. Oh, my God. No. No. I am. So I hate it. I'm <laughs> terrified of it. <laughs> terrified of it. So even with that in mind, I'm still going because I'd rather get used to that and get paid than <laughs> just take a million dollars. Well, get you could double up, put it on OnlyFans, and then... It's true. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Start a Patreon on <laughs> this podcast and then just film I mean, you that. You could do that now, right? Like just an, you just an OF to. of you just finger banging your bum hole. Exactly. Yeah. And then just showing the money afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I did the math. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, like if you just like watch a movie or something and just keep your finger up there, go to the shop and see a nice pair of shoes. You're like, I want them. Do you have a bathroom? And then just <laughs> go in there for 10 seconds. A bathroom, seconds. just whip it out on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Pay for the legal fees <laughs> as well. Do you take butt coins? <laughs> oh my god. Butt coin? <laughs> New crypto. Butt coin. I think that's a good spot to end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on the podcast. That was a lot of fun. Um, I know you guys were a little bit nervous, but hopefully it was fun. Yeah, no, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We appreciate your time. No worries at all. Um, I'll definitely have to have you guys on again sometime. I'll, I'll make sure that my schedule is clear in 13 years' time for Levi to come on. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. He's the most entertaining. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, rate, comment, share the show. All that fun stuff. Tell your friends, family, neighbours, pets, and friends, family, pa- neighbours, pets. Um, yeah. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.